A frozen shoulder is one of the most common causes of shoulder pain post-stroke. Up to 25% of stroke survivors will be diagnosed with one in the first six months, and up to 75% of stroke survivors will be diagnosed with a frozen shoulder at some point in their recovery. And that's why today I'm gonna walk you through some stretches with modifications that you can do at home to reduce pain and improve movement if you're experiencing a frozen shoulder. Let's get into it. All right, everyone. So we are gonna go through two sets of six different stretches. And to start us off, we're gonna do neck stretches or a neck release. So we are going to take our neck. This is going to be my affected side as I'm showing you throughout this video. Your unaffected hand is gonna come over on the opposite side of your head. And you're gonna very gently pull your head over so that your ear is coming down to your shoulder. This should be a really gentle stretch. Don't tug and pull your head. And the reason we're starting with a neck stretch is because our, our shoulders don't live in isolation. Our, our neck and our shoulder are connected. We have muscles that cross both of them. So we wanna make sure that we're starting and getting warmed up by giving our neck a nice stretch. So let's go ahead and relax here, head back up to normal, or midline, not normal. Um, the next one we're gonna do is pendulums. So what I would have you do is scoot forward to the edge of your seat, have someone with you if your sitting balance is off, and we're gonna focus on moving your affected arm forward and back, and then maybe doing a circle and the movement should be coming from your shoulder joint and we're trying to just get that shoulder joint moving and get that arm moving again okay go ahead and come back up now for this one we're gonna be sitting down and I have got a nice stable chair here I'm modifying this one with a washcloth. You're gonna take your affected hand and push it out in front of you. And the goal is that we're getting a nice stretch into shoulder flexion or bending the shoulder up. So we're just gonna sit here and hold that stretch for just a few more seconds, really feeling the stretch happened kind of on the top and the side of your arm. And let's bring it back up. Very nice. Good. Okay. Now the next one I have for you, I'm going to come back right here. I have the umbrella stretch. We are focused on your rotator cuff, particularly your external rotators. Now I have a little bit of a shorter umbrella here but you're gonna to try to keep your elbow in at your side and push your forearm out and away from your body. We're trying to target the external rotators of your affected shoulder, giving them a nice stretch. Now, if you need to, to modify this, you can get some ACE wrap bandaging and wrap your hand on if you don't have enough grip to hold on to the end of an umbrella. And I also recommend if you have a longer umbrella, that's probably a better way to go. Might make it a little easier. Okay, our next stretch is going to be a cross body stretch. You're gonna use your unaffected hand to lift up your affected arm and just bring it across your body and hold here. Now the goal is that we're opening up the back of your shoulder and your shoulder blade, that we're giving that a nice stretch because like I mentioned, the shoulder doesn't live in isolation. It works very closely with the shoulder blade as well. So let's go ahead and relax that. For our sixth stretch, our last stretch before we start into the second set of those, is a chest opening stretch. Now this is the opposite of what we just did. We were stretching out the back of our shoulder. Now we're gonna stretch out the front of our shoulders. We're gonna bring our shoulders back so we open up our chest. I'm 
gonna scoot back just a little bit. You may wanna take a couple deep breaths while you're here and we're just holding those shoulders back. And I like to do both of them at the same time. I just, I think this one feels really nice. So, and then if you need to bring your shoulders forward, we have a little bit of a rest break here before we go into our second set. It's really important that as you start getting a little bit of movement back, if you have a frozen shoulder, it's important to really start capitalizing on that with stretching because that tissue, that connective tissue that has gotten tight and causing the frozen shoulder really needs to be stretched out and moved again. All right, but we are on to our second set of stretches. We're gonna start with those neck release stretches. So unaffected hand is coming over to the opposite side of your head. You're gently pulling so that you're getting a nice stretch along the side of your neck and down to the top of your shoulder. Now, if you need to hold and then relax for a minute here and then go back into it, you can. I know I say this a lot in my videos, but everybody is starting somewhere. So if you can't hold it for the entire time, don't worry about it. If you can get five seconds, Take a break, do five more seconds, that's great. Our second stretch, we are working on pendulums again. So come forward to the edge of your seat here, and you're going to bend over. Arm is going to be hanging, affected arm is hanging, and you're just moving it front to back. You might move it side to side. You're trying to let gravity help you with this movement. So you can actively try, but you can see I'm moving my whole body to sort of get this movement. So it doesn't have to just be like this. Use your whole body to really help you get some of that movement. All right, let's come back up. I'm gonna have a seat here and we're going back to shoulder flexion. So. I have my washcloth. You may or may not need this. If you have active movement, go ahead and slide your arm forward, whether that's on the towel or not. And you're holding that position here. Now, depending on your level of tightness or movement, you may need someone to help you with this. And then if you need to, you can just take your hand here and provide a little bit of stability as you're holding your arm in that stretch. Very nice. All right, let's come back up. And we're gonna go back into our umbrella stretch. As I mentioned before, if you have a longer one, that might make this a little easier for you. But elbow is coming in at the side. And then we're gently pushing the affected hand out to the side to give your external rotators of your rotator cuff a little bit of a stretch here as i mentioned before if you can't hold on here or on the top go ahead and get some of that ace wrap bandaging to see if you can get your arm or your hand to stay on that way all right i'm going to set this off to the side now because we're moving on to our fifth stretch second set which is our cross body stretch. So unaffected arm is taking affected arm and gently, whew, gently bringing across your chest. Again, this movement is so that we can open up the back of your shoulder, get the back of your shoulder a bit of a stretch, open up your shoulder blade. Because like I said, the shoulder blade doesn't exist in isolation. We have a lot of moving parts that work together to give us certain movements. Okay, let's go ahead and relax there and let's do our last stretch, which is kind of our cool down for this, which is a nice chest open. So bringing both shoulders back if you can, pushing them back, chin is up, you're opening your chest, so that you're getting a nice opening, a nice stretch on the front of your shoulder. 
We just stretched the back and now we need to stretch the front. So if you need to take a moment and pull your shoulders back forward. Let's go ahead and end with our last couple seconds here. Breathing deeply. And relaxing and bring your shoulders forward. Great job. All right, everyone, that's it for today. I hope that you found these stretches helpful. And I'd love it if you'd leave me a comment down below and let me know other topics that you might like to see me cover. As always, I am leaving a link down in the description if you would like to sign up for my email list. That'll get you free stroke recovery tips and motivational emails, as well as a free copy of my ebook, The Stroke Recovery Pocket Guide. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.